Uh, okay, so I will continue the topic of quadratic equations and then I will describe in Swedish books the formula is called PQ formula and in British and American ones probably or the rest of rest of the world I think it's Why called ABC yeah so it's ABC formula yeah. I myself prefer to use ABC formula because I will describe why. but before doing that let us do a little bit of warm-up and review what we did before so here we talked about uh, quadratic equations a quadratic equation is a, an equation can be put in this form yes let us review very fast and of course I told you that a shouldn't be zero because if a is equal to zero then this term is gone then I have a first degree equation that is a math 1c problem so in this course, we consider A is not zero. But there are some possibilities, yes? One possibility was that what happens if B is zero? This becomes a mat 1C problem. Yes? And then what happens if C is zero? Then we use factorization, yes? And then what happens if B is not zero and C is not zero? We learned one method so far, and that was the completing the square method, yes? The method of completing the square. Okay, so that is what we learned so far. I want to give an exercise to warm up, refreshing your memory for this one. But the good news is that all these cases can be used, can be solved using ABC or PQ formulas. So that is what you want. So this method that I will describe a little bit later today will actually, you don't need any other method. But still, I believe that for these two cases, if you insist to solve using formulas, you can do that, but you are wasting the time. So I would recommend you, even in the future, that you learn these formulas in a good way. If B is zero or C is zero, don't use PQ or the ABC formula because it becomes unnecessarily lengthy. But for this case, the method of completing a square will become obsolete sooner or later. But the, the idea that you learn from it will never be obsolete. So you have to remember this trick for other purposes that we will discuss about. Okay, so let us try to do a warm-up problem. So solve example. I want to wait for you, of course. Example. So here I emphasize, because we will have two methods shortly. So I would say use the method. This is also in the exam. I will sometimes ask you to do with using completing the square. Use the completing the square method. Use com uh, the completing the square method to solve the following following equations. Okay? So one question is this one. So part one, three x squared plus, uh, what was that, four x is equal to 15. I'll wait for you. So review what you had, I, I hope that you have some notes in front of you from the previous lesson. I hope that you haven't forgotten, if you have, you have to review. That's the only way that you can learn and don't forget. Yes? 
So I'm just reviewing things. But for this Math 2C course, in the beginning, you have to learn both of them. But in Math 3C, I will never solve this equation myself using the complete square method. I always use PQ or ABC formula. And I have used it a lot, so I have it in my memory. I also recommend you to have it in your memory. If not, you will have it always on the formula sheet. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn this, because if you don't learn the method of completing a square, you will be uh, in trouble when we go to the next stage of this chapter, which we want to talk about parabola. Yes, so the first very simple curve that we want to study this course in this course. Okay, so let me just tell you what to do. You remember, the first step in the algorithm was to move the constant term to the right. But this is already done in this problem. So 15 is already moved to the right. So that part I don't need to do. What was the second step? If you remember, these are the hard ones in which this not, is not one. So the point is to add something to make a complete square. But do you remember, Making this a complete square without dividing was problematic sometimes when I gave you the last example. Of course, if you can't do it, just do it. Otherwise, follow the algorithm. So what was the second step in the algorithm? Divide by this number, whatever it is. I divide everything. So I divide by 3. This becomes what? X squared. This becomes 4 over 3x. The right-hand side becomes 5. So I divide it by 3. And then here, always the, the rule of thumb will work. What was the rule of thumb? This number divided by 2 squared. If you are quick in this calculation, which I really expect you at this level, these are nothing. 4 over 3 divided by 2 is how much? 4 over 6. 4 over 6, Four over six is one good answer, but the best answer is 2 over 3. Yes? So if you write 4 over 3 divide by 2. Whenever you want to divide a fraction by 2, what uh, Lennon said is correct. Lennon multiplied the denominator by 2, which is correct. But you can also divide the numerator by 2. So the answer becomes 2 thirds. What Lennon said is that 4 over 6, which can be simplified to 2 over 3. And because this, we are not allowed to use the calculator in this part, it really matters if you work with two-thirds or four over six. Okay, so I would prefer to divide by two and write it this in my head, but this is not the answer. What is the answer? I have to raise it to power two. So if I raise it to power two, the numerator to power two is four. The denominator to power two is nine. This is the scratch work. And then you know that your number is this number, so you add that number, yes? So this becomes x squared plus 4 over 3x, plus what? Uh, 4 over 9. But I want to respect the equality, so it means that I have to also add 4 over 9 to the other side. Okay? But then, this is, if you have done that calculation right, don't doubt, this becomes a complete square. The complete square of what? X. X. This is plus, plus. 2 over 3. Do you have any problems here? No. Okay. On the right hand side, of course, you have to do it. You are not allowed to use the calculator, might be. So you go and calculate it in a scratch paper. So the denominator here is 1, here is 9, so I write both of them with 9. So this is no change, there is no change here, 9. This was 1, now it is 9. So I have to multiply this by 9 as well. Yes? And then if you add them, the denominator is just 9. These becomes what? 40. So instead of that, I just write 40. 9 over. And then what I do? I take the square root. But the trick, what was the point? The point here is to remember once with plus sign, once with negative sign. But this is a friendly number. Friendly, I mean you can calculate it. Square root of 9 is what? 3. Square root of 49 is 7. But this is one possibility. Or x plus 2 over 3 is what? Negative 7 over 3. Yes? 
and then I am looking for x. So I move two thirds to the other side. I will continue here. So it becomes what? X is equal to seven over three minus two over three. So x becomes which number? Five over five over three. That is one answer. Or the other answer is what? X is equal to minus seven over three. I move two over three there. So x becomes what? Minus nine over three, which of course is minus three. Thank you. So that is the answer. I don't know, from yesterday to today, you have, shouldn't forget these things. Okay? That's the whole point. Any questions here? Uh, okay, so let me give you another question again. I think, I don't know how many of you could do this. Uh, oh, it's terrible, yes. So you should all raise your hands. There is nothing uh, mysterious here. Yes. Okay, let me give you one more example and then go to the next lesson. The same story, but for this one. Number two. So 5x squared. Uh, 5x squared plus 6x minus 8 equals to 0. I want to wait for you again. Okay, any progress? Yes. Can you confirm his answers? Are these numbers? Are they correct? Yes. Okay. So if you don't mind, let me start solving them because we want to continue today's lesson. Do you see there is no creativity? Hard problems in math, from my perspective, are not the ones that are lengthy and you know what to do. The ones that you don't know what to do, they are hard. Okay? That's an algorithmic way. So you follow my rules, okay? So what is the first step we do? Divide. Um, no, before dividing, move this A to the other side. Of course, you can just do them interchangeably, but let us be organized. So it becomes 5x squared plus 6x is equal to what? The next step, divide by 5. Everything by 5. And then don't, you have to write it in fraction form because it wants exact values. The next step is the one to you go to a scratch board. The rule of thumb was what? Uh, Whatever this number is, divide it in your head. Can you do it in your head? Five over, uh, three over five. Three over five. You can say six over ten, but three over five is superior because this is a smaller number. This number divide by two, and then you in a scratch work, you square it. What's the answer? Nine over twenty-five. Nine over twenty-five. So that is the number that I have to add. Yes? So I will add that one x squared plus 6 over 5x plus 9 over 25 but i want to respect the equality so what i do here i have to do with the other side yes if you have done your calculations right then definitely it becomes a complete square which is x plus, plus what three, three, 3 over 5, five. On the right hand side, I have to do it in a scratch work. I make the denominators 25. This is already, the second one is already 25. This one becomes 25 by multiplying by five. So I have to multiply by five and then I have nine. So again, what do I get for the 25? So I put this here. So it becomes 49 over 25. So what happens now? I take the, com I take the square root but I have to remember once with positive sign, once with negative sign. But they are also friendly numbers, so it becomes what? 7 over 5 or minus 7 over 5. Yes? Okay, can you do this in your head now? You just move this to the other side. Fortunately, the denominators are the same, so it becomes 7 over 5 minus 3 over 5, which is 4 over 5. This is one answer, or the other one is minus 7 over 5, 
I move this to the other side, minus 3 over 5, which in principle becomes minus 10 over 5, which is minus 2. So your answer, lemon, is completely correct. So it was not hard. Okay. But now let us, if you don't mind, let us immediately introduce ABC formula and then PQ formula. ABC formula is not in your book, but it is in the formula sheet. If you don't mind, let me do ABC formula first, and then if you want, I can also tell you PQ formula. Yes. The difference is that PQ formula is a little bit, there is a disadvantage in using PQ formula. I will tell you why. Because PQ formula works only if A is equal to 1. And if A is not equal to 1, it's not a big deal. You divide by A, but then you might face fractions, and then you have to work with fractions. Okay, so that's why, if you don't mind, let me just try to solve the problem. But the method is that uh, I want you to immediately understand what is happening here. I want to use the same method that I used here, tackle to the problem. So you see, in these two problems, I gave you my numbers, but this time I don't want to give you numbers. I just want to do it for this case. Yes? So ABC formula is not a very a strange formula. The person who learned, actually, you learned the completing a square method, but instead of applying it case by case, you apply it here, and then you find your formula. So that's the idea of the uh, ABC formula. But I want, to tell me, I want you to tell me what to do. I want to apply the, completing a square, the method of completing the square here. So what should I do first? Follow the same algorithm. What should I do? Yes? I move C to the other side. That's the first step. So what happens? It becomes A X squared plus B X equals to minus C. And then what do I do next? So C is very, very big here now. So minus C. What was the next step in the algorithm? Divide by this number, but it was a number before. It is a letter here now. I divide by A. I divide by A, this becomes what? X squared. This B becomes B over A X. On the right hand side, C over A. This is the case. So you see I'm using the exactly the same algorithm. I'm moving C to the other side. I'm dividing by this number. But because these are not numbers, these are letters, so I have to live with algebra rather than calculations. Okay, I go to a scratch paper here, because I need to do what? I need to understand which number is that I have to add. Okay, so what is that one? The rule of thumb applies here as well. So I go here, B, A, and I divide it by two. Can you do it in your head? Ah, yes? Two A. So Lennon's method is better here. Why? Because B, if I divide it by two, it becomes B over two. It becomes more complicated. So this is why I will do it. So what? If you want, in principle, you have to write B over A. You have to change this to multiplication, and then you have to flip this. So what happens? B times one, two times A. But this is not the number that I have to add. What is the number that I have to add? This number to power 2. This is the number that I have. I'm just following exactly the same thing. So this becomes b squared over 4a squared. So it becomes a little bit more complicated because, of course, if I cannot write a simple number there. I have to live with b squared over 4a squared. But no problems. I do it. So I add that expression to both sides. Yes? So this is what I'm doing. Okay, can you tell me what is the next step? Yes? Don't get confused, that's exactly the same thing. The right hand side in this case is a little bit subtle. Forget about that one, but you, you, you should be able to know what is this. Yes? 
x plus b a over a l square. This? Yeah. A little bit of mistake. Or, no, no. Yes, sir? 2a. Yes? Because that is the same number, you know. This number should sit here. The first one squared is this one. 2 times the first one times the second one. If you don't put this 2 there, then it becomes 2b over ax. But I have only b over ax. So I put the 2 here so that these 2 and that 2 are cancelled. Then I have b over ax, which is exactly the correct one. And then the second one squared is that one. So that's correct. But for the right hand side, I have to be a little bit more creative. I mean, I have to make the denominators the same. But because these are not numbers, I have to do it algebraically. So I want to write two fractions. I want your help. Okay? I want to write two same denominators here. Do you have any idea what I want to write? Yes? For the first one, B squared. No, I, I just talk about the denominators. I want to take oh. the denominators the same. 4A squared times... No. 4A squared. Here and there? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Why? Because 4A squared compared to this 4A squared has, nothing, has no changes. So I don't need to change anything here. But... 4a squared is not this denominator. I ask myself how a has changed to 4a squared. By multiplying by what? 4a. By 4a. So a has changed to 4a squared by being multiplied by 4a. But I am not allowed to change the problem. So to compensate for the change, I will do similar thing to the numerator. So it becomes 4ac. Okay? In other words, if I give you an E-level question, if I give you this in the exam, in the previous quiz, it, is, it doesn't even deserve E-level points. But what is, if I ask you to simplify this, what's the answer? Can I simplify 4 by 4? Yes. yes, because these are factors. So 4 by 4 can be cancelled. A squared means A times A. So a and 1a can be cancelled. So what will be left for me? C over, c over a. So that's correct. Instead of c over a, I have written it in that way. You might ask why. The purpose is clear because I want to have the same denominators. Why this is good to have the same denominators? Because I can subtract. Okay, so let us go one more step. Okay, the denominators are the same, so I write the same denominator, I subtract the numerators. Yes? Okay, can you help me to do, I want to clean this one. Okay, can you help me to continue now? What is the next step? So we are here. This one is comparable to this one. What was the next step? That is the next step here as well. Taking the square root. If I take the square root, what happens? It becomes x plus b over 2a. On the right hand side, I will face two problems. One with positive sign, one with negative sign. But I have to take a square root of this. Yes? A square, let me write it here for you. A square root of this expression can be simplified a little bit, but not that much. I can take a square root of the numerator divided by square root of the denominator. This, I have to live with it. It cannot be simplified in general. But denominator can be written more simple, in a simple form. Can you tell me what? No. Be careful. These are not something that you don't know, but you make mistakes. 2a. Because the square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared is a. So it's just 2a. But can I do something for it? Not in general. I have to live with that one. So here, what I write, I would write square root of 
b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But this is not the whole answer. Or neg x plus b over 2a is negative square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But the problem is not finished because I am looking for x. The next steps are extremely simple. I move this to the other side because I want to isolate my x. So if I move this to the other side, this is positive, it becomes negative. And then this is plus. The formulas look a little bit horrible, but these are very standard ones. You will also learn it, do it smoothly. And then this one I move to the other side, it becomes minus b over 2a minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So these formulas are in the formula sheet, and these, this is called ABC formula. And then, usually, mathematicians are a little bit lazy. They combine them into one formula. How? They write it as x minus b over 2a is here and there. This part is also repeating itself. They copy and paste this part as well. And then, once positive, once negative. This is a very common notation in mathematics. They say plus minus. It means once consider the plus sign, once consider the negative sign. This is exactly the one that you have in the formula sheet. But in Cambridge A-level formula sheet, because the denominators are the same, they are also combined. Now, when I was at your age, I learned it in that way. So if you don't mind, you also learn it my way, okay? So I would write 2a here, and then I would write minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. This is the famous ABC formula. If someone asks you why this formula is useful, you say that you, you can use this formula to solve any quadratic equation whatsoever. Okay? Any questions here? Okay, I, because I need this formula and you haven't memorized that yet, I will write one formula where somewhere so that we can use it over and over again. And if you don't mind, let me write it with green. Okay, so what you do, I would write the formula here. A x squared plus B x plus C equals to zero. X has two answers in general. Minus, let me write it the same way I did there. Minus B plus minus square root of, you have it in your memory now, B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. Okay, so this is called ABC formula. Any questions so far? Okay, so I will never ask you to derive this in the exam, but if you don't understand these things, it's very soulless kind of mathematics. You just memorize the formula. It's better to see at least once where the formulas are coming from. Okay, but before continuing, if you don't mind, let me start solving this problem. We already know the answer. Uh, unfortunately, I erased that. So you have it on your notebook, you can help me. But I want to confirm that the same thing happens if I use that formula. So my preference is this. If I am not forced to use any other method, I usually use ABC formula. Okay, unless they ask me, no, do the completing a square method or something. Okay, so let us solve this problem again using this. But be careful. Every formula has a domain of applicability. You have to be careful. This formula only works if everything is on one side, the other side is zero. If this is not zero, you have to make it zero first. Because this formula works, I don't know how should I emphasize, let me, let me underline this with red. It has to be zero, okay? So if I want to use this formula to solve this problem, uh, if you don't mind, let me just clean it here. It's still, the, this is a little bit strange. In completing a square method, I have to move 15 there. 
but in ABC formula if you 15 there I have to bring it back okay so this is the, the first step that I do is this because of this underlined zero there. I will write it for you down. You don't need to make it so long. But I am teacher. When I teach, I have to make sure that most of you understand. So I will first understand what is A. I ask myself, what is A in this problem? Three. What is B in this problem? Four. And what is C in this problem? Minus 15. Extremely important to contain the negative sign with it. And then if you don't mind, I will do it in two steps, especially in the beginning. I will calculate this part. Okay, this part is called discriminant. And the Swedish word is the same, I think just with K. It is in your book. So if you see that word, this is a math book word. You cannot find it in the dictionary of normal English. So discriminant is a math terminology. Discriminant means something that indicates if the equation has a solution or not. I will talk about that. But let us just learn the name, discriminant. And I show it with capital D. Yes? So what I do, first I calculate the discriminant. Write the formula several times so that you can send it to your memory. This is the discriminant. Okay? extremely simple task B is this number A is this number C is that number so just put them there so it becomes 4 to power 2 minus 4 times A is 3 times minus 15 and do the calculation so what happens 4 to power 2 is 16 be careful here minus 4 times 3 is 12 minus 12 Minus 12 times minus 15, first of all it becomes plus. 12 times 15, of course if the numbers are like that, I give you access to calculator. 12 times 15 is 180. Yes? Don't worry about these numbers. And then you add them. It becomes 196. So this is the discriminant, yes? Yes, that is minus. Minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. Minus 12 times minus 15 is plus 180. And then if I add them, it becomes 196. Okay, is this number positive or negative? Positive. positive. If it is negative, you are in trouble. It doesn't mean that you did it wrong. If it is negative, you are not allowed to put a negative number below the square root sign. If it turns out to be negative, you are actually relieved. You just immediately write there are no solutions. Okay, that is why it is called discriminant. Because by calculating the discriminant, you immediately understand, is there any solution to your equation or not? It determines. Discriminant means something it determines. What, pardon? Then you have to be sure that you did it right. Yes, of course, that in that case. But in this case, I did it right, and I see this is positive. So here, I, am, I know that there are two answers. I know it, for sure. Okay, then I will do it like this. X is equal to minus b plus or minus i am writing this because i want to memorize that and i can write capital d here it is easier to remember it like this d is the discriminant you calculate it if it is negative don't continue just write no solutions if this is positive continue okay so what happens now it is minus b b is in front of your eyes so it is minus four plus or minus a square root sign discriminant is what 196 for these kinds of numbers I definitely allow you to use calculator but here I have them in my memory and then 2 times a a is this number so it becomes 2 times 3 if you take this calculator a square root of 196 is 14 okay so then I continue so minus 4 I copy and paste plus or minus I copy and paste this is 14 and then 2 times 3 is extremely simple 6 from now you have to divide your problem into two parts because I have to consider both cases one case is minus 4 for example let me choose the positive sign plus 14 
and then divide it by 6, which becomes 10 over 6. You have to simplify 5 over 3. Or I have to consider other scenario. Minus 4. This time, which sign? Minus, minus 14 over 6. Minus 4 minus 14 minus 18 divided by 6. This time is minus 3. So the answers are 5 over 3 and minus 3. In your book, sometimes they say x1, x2. It doesn't matter. You can write this one x2, this one x1, or you can write like me. x minus x plus. Yes, so you can just write this. And I hope that we didn't make any mistake. Did you write the answer to this question yes, before? Right. Was it? That's right? No. Yes. You might still think that this is also lengthy. The reason it seems lengthy, because I re this is the first time that you are seeing this. I am, to be honest, exaggerating the explanations. If I want to do it, I immediately write this in my head and then put the numbers there. So it is much simpler. But anyway, in the beginning, I want you to understand, don't care about doing it fast. Care about doing it precise, okay? But now, uh, that one, I want to give the chance to you to solve it. You already know the answers, but I want to use ABC formula. So I want to wait for you. Try to write everything like me in the beginning. Then that is up to you. You want to do it faster or not. Okay? Just do it. This problem, we already know the answers, but I want you to use ABC formula to uh, reconfirm that those answers are indeed correct. Uh, I don't know, if you have your laptops, only use the calculator, not GeoGebra. Of course, GeoGebra, if you put this in GeoGebra, it gives you immediately the answers. Just use the calculator part of GeoGebra for calculating these numbers if you want. Okay, uh, should I do that? The first thing that you need to think, I told you that you don't need to write so lengthy even in the exam. Yeah, if you are faster just do it faster but here if i want to write everything down i first ask myself what a is before before asking that i have to make sure that i am respecting that on un, uh, red underline it has to be zero otherwise the formula is not working so it is zero so no problems a is five c is oh, sorry b is six and c is minus eight and then I write the formula for the discriminant. So B is this number, minus 4, A is this number, times C is that number. Here you have to be careful. 6 to power 2, 36. And this is extremely simple because 4 times 5, minus 4 times 5 is minus 20. Minus 20 times minus 8, plus 160 and then it, of course it becomes uh, coincidentally the same number here if it becomes negative you just don't continue there are no solutions you are done if it is positive you continue and I prefer to write the formula here it's minus B it's not hard to remember it like this square root of what D divided by 2a Instead of writing b squared minus 4ac, I just wrote b. And then I put the numbers in. Minus b. b is this number. So minus b is minus 6 plus or minus square root of 196. That is your d. You put it there. And then 2 times a. a is this. So 2 times 5. Yes? Um, say if. Instead of it was instead of it being a plus six, it was minus six. Would the formula work? Yes. Then if it is minus six, minus b becomes six. Okay. Yes. The formula always works. That's the good oh, point. It's on, but it's only if it's uh, three. Uh, what's it called? Yes, three coefficients. It should be in this standard form. If it is not, you have to reduce it to this form and then use the form. Okay. So we continue again. For this number, I either give it to you in the exam or you can use the calculator. It's fourteen. And 2 times 5 is 10. 
And then from here, you have two possibilities. It doesn't matter if you draw it any way that you like. X is equal to once with positive sign, once with negative sign. Yes? So this one is what? 8 over 10. You can, in this case, you can write 0, 0,8 because that's exact. But I always prefer to write in fractions. So what is that? 4 over 5. So that's one answer. And here it becomes minus 20 divided by 10, which is minus 2. So the answers are two answers there are. X is 4 over 5. X is minus 2. And these are the answers that we got from this one. The good point about this, you don't need to be creative. Of course, it might be lengthy a little bit, but everything is in order. So you just follow the steps and you have your answers. Okay, because the title of today's lesson is also PQ formula, and here in Sweden, PQ formula, they value it a lot. So let me at least tell you this, but from next time, I will use it, ABC formula, but if you want, you can use both of them. But I want to tell you, I want to use, for example, PQ formula to solve this problem, to see the difference. In ABC formula, I have to be careful only for one case. This should be zero. In PQ formula, not only this should be zero, but this should be one only. If it is not one, you have to divide by that one first. If when you divide, no fractions are involved, PQ formula is easier. But usually, and the, the book are actually giving all the examples when you divide, there are no fractions. So somehow they are not showing the real problem to you. Okay, so anyway, uh, so let me try to uh, write the PQ formula here for you. So PQ formula is this one. You want to solve this. Again, the method is the same. The reason it is called PQ formula because they write it in this form. Okay, and then you see that. Let me emphasize it by red. It has to be one. And then it has to be zero. Okay, but let us do the completing a square method again. Let us say that we don't want to learn ABC formula, we want to write PQ formula, but you need to tell me what to do. Do you remember? We have to apply the completing a square method to this. So tell me, I don't want you to forget. What is the first step? Move, the... Move Q to the other side, the completing a square method. So this becomes X squared plus PX is equal to minus Q. Then the rule of thumb works immediately. And it's not a surprise because it's already one. Okay? So what is the rule of thumb? You divide this number by two and then square it. It becomes P squared over four. This is the one that you have to add. So what happens? It becomes X squared plus P of PX plus P squared over four. But I have to respect to add the same thing to the other side. Yes? And now what happens? This can be collected as to one completed square. What is the answer? X, X plus P divided, by two. P divided by two is equal to this one. Let me see which way they have written it. Okay, in the book, instead of P squared over four, they have written P over two to power two. So let me follow the book. And then this is minus Q. But the rest of the story is the same. I take a square root signs. I have two uh, equations to follow. One with positive sign or one with negative sign. Yes? And then I move P over 2 to the other side. This is the formula, which is called PQ formula. I move this to the other side. Once with plus, once with minus. This formula is also in the formula sheet, and this is called the PQ formula.
Yes? yes. And then, of course, I'm not saying this is bad. The only weakness that this has is that you have to make this one one. So it means that you have to divide first, if that is not already one. If you divide and you don't face any fractions, even it is better. The numbers becomes smaller. But if you divide and then you have to work with fractions, if you are good with fractions, it doesn't matter. But if you are not very good working with fractions, you are making more trouble to yourself. For example, if you don't mind, let me solve this one using PQ formula. That will be more or less the last example I use PQ formula. Okay? So, if I want to use the problem using PQ formula, let us do it here. That the same question using PQ formula. The first thing that I have to do is to do what? Divide by five. Divide by five. Okay, so this becomes x squared. The next one becomes six over five x minus eight over five equals to zero. Now, instead of finding a, b, and c, you need to tell me what p is, what q is. What p is? Six over five. Six over five. What q is? Negative eight over. 5. The discriminant in PQ formula is not B squared minus 4AC, is this guy. It's P over 2 to the power of 2 minus Q. Okay? So P is this number. Divided by 2 in your head, uh, three, over five. 3 over 5, and then you have to square it, minus Q is also negative. Yes? And then what you have to do, it becomes 9 over 25 minus minus plus 8 over 5. You see, the only problem is that you have to work with fractions. It's not hard. But then the fractions, you have to take the common denominator. 9 over 25 plus 40 over 25. The answer becomes 49 over... Okay, can I continue? Yes, because this is positive. Okay, so I, I put them in the PQ formula here. So X becomes minus in the formula. P divided by 2, I did it once, it's 3 over 5. Don't get confused. P over 2 is 3 over 5. But there is a minus sign here. So it's minus 3 over 5 plus or minus the square root of the discriminant. The discriminant is this number. Yes, what happens? It becomes minus 3 over 5 plus or minus 7 over 5. And then you have two answers again. One with plus sign, minus 3 over 5 plus 7 over 5, which becomes 4 over 5. The other answer is minus 3 over 5, sorry for the mess. Minus 7 over 5 is minus 10 over 5, which is minus 2. So the answers are the same. That is a subjective thing. If you like this, do this. Or if you like that, do that. But the answers are the same. I'm telling you, PQ formula is very good. If, for example, PQ formula is very good for this case, you see. If I have 2x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals to 0. Might be PQ formula is even better here. So, for example, if you want to use PQ formula, you have to divide by 2. But you don't any you don't face any problems because this also becomes 2x, it also becomes minus 4, and they are very friendly numbers. Yes? So that is why I don't like the book, because they are using all these kinds of equations that when you divide, it becomes simpler. Okay? But if, the, if you divide, it becomes fraction. If you are allowed to use calculator, might be you can manage it. If not, I know that from my experience, you are weaker in cal even my Even myself, I am weaker in calculating with fractions rather than integers. Okay? It's a little bit problematic. Okay, I, I did this one to you, because first of all, if you see the book, I don't want you to feel strange, but I will use the ABC formula here. But both of them, in the beginning, when I started teaching here, PQ for ABC formula was not in the formula sheet, but I don't know if from 2018 or 2019, they decided to put the formula there as well. So you have it. But still, I really want you to memorize it because this is one of the most important formulas that you will work with it. If you go to technical universities, this is one of the formulas that you always use. So it is better to have it in your memory.
Any questions here? No. Okay, but of course, the questions are not always that simple. Uh, so this is the E-level question. I give you an uh, equation and I ask you to solve. Straightforward. It is lengthy, but it's E-level question because there is no twist to the question. Yes? I will, I will. I will go to even A++, okay? But let us try to see uh, how you solve this problem. Okay, before continuing, let us make sure that you understand. You calculate the discriminant, it becomes a number, positive. Then how many solutions are there? Two. Sometimes it becomes negative. Then what do you do? No answer. It, it means that this is part of the solution. It has to be in your paper. But then you say that because discriminant is negative, there are no solutions. There is one possibility I didn't talk to you yet. What is the other scenario? I told you what happens if it turns out to be positive. You answered me correctly. I also asked what happens if it becomes negative. You answered correctly. But there is a third alternative there. Zero. So what happens if T D accidentally becomes zero? What happens? If D is, is zero, it means the discriminant is zero. Then a square root of zero is what? Zero. zero. And then if this is zero, it doesn't matter if you add zero or subtract zero. Both of them will give you the same answer. So what do you get for the answer? You get answer, but how many? One. That answer, for some reason that we will learn later, is called the double root or a double root. Even though it's a strange because that's just one root. But you think in that way, there are two roots that are equal. In that sense, it is called a double root. So that is the terminology I want you to learn, okay? So let me give you one example of that type, and then we continue. For example, let us say that I ask you to solve this equation. Let us use ABC formula for this. So am I allowed to use ABC formula directly? Yes. So what is A? 4. What is B? Minus 4. What is C? One. What is the discriminant formula? B squared minus 4AC, which is minus 4 to power 2, B is minus 4, minus 4 times A times C. What happens? Minus 4 to power 2? 16. This is also 16, but it's negative. So the answer becomes what? Zero. So it is already indicating how many solutions are there? one number which is called the double root. So what can I do? I would write x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of d over 2a. But do I need to care about this part? No, because d is 0, square root of 0 is 0, plus 0 or minus 0 is always 0. So that's the answer. So it becomes minus b you see, this is one question that uh, Ahmed asked. B is minus 4. Minus minus 4 becomes 4. 2A is 8. So the answer is only 1 half. How many answers I have? I have 1. So now you learn that this is very important. If I have a quadratic equation, I have three possibilities. This is something, this is not in the formula sheet. You need to know. How many possibilities are there? Either I have two solutions. Either I have one solution or no solutions at all. Yes? Is that clear? Okay. Now, before ending this lesson, let me write some questions we solve together, okay? <laughs> so solve the following equations. I want to wait for you. So these are these are C level questions. Okay. Solve the following equations. So number one x plus 2 
times x plus 3. Uh, so let me see what can I do. 6 it's equals to 8. You start solving. Don't wait for me. But by the way, when I say solve, I want exact values. If I want you to do decimals, I will definitely mention it in the problem. And the other question is this one. And then I don't think we will have enough time to finish. It. Babak. Yes. Do, uh, do, do they want us to use the ABC? It's up to you. Oh. Yes. I want you to learn ABC formula or PQ formula in your choice. That's up to you. But I don't want to use completing a square method for this lesson because I want you to learn this new lesson. Okay? So it might be for this one you need a calculator. You can find a calculator in your computer, so I'm sure. So 5x minus 3, uh, x minus 5. is 2x plus 5 to the power of 2, and then you have 90. That's it. You might need a calculator here. Yes, don't hesitate to use it if you have it. And uh, I will solve the first one. The second one I will start on Friday. But please do it at home. Just one exercise at home is enough. Whenever you have time until Friday, I want you to do it before coming to the lesson. Okay, for this one, we still don't know. Yeah, if you listen to me, I will repeat everything. Here, if I want to solve this, I don't still know what is going to happen. So I have to expand. Okay? So the first thing that I will do is to expand. X times X is X squared. X times 3. 2 times X. 2 times 3, and this is 8. Now I understand that, do you remember we had these kind of questions before, but x squared was cancelled. Here, I know x squared is not going to be cancelled. So this means that I don't move x's to the left, numbers to the right, because the method is changed now. I have to move everything to the left because I, I know that I want to use ABC formula and then you see that the red underline for zero. So I move everything to the left and simplify. X squared is X squared. These two is what? 5X. I move this to the other side, it becomes minus two. If I want to use ABC formula, A is one. You can use PQ formula here safely as well because it is automatically 1. That's up to you. So I write A equals to 1, B is equal to 5, C is equal to minus 2. I find a discriminant. It's, let me just do it in my head. What's the answer? 25. Minus 4 times this times that. It becomes what? Plus 8. Minus 4 times 1 times minus 2 is plus 8, which is? 33. And because this is positive, I know that I will have two answers. Here it's extremely simple. You just write the formula and you don't even need to continue because I want to keep exact values. So minus b is minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 33 divided by 2 times a, which is 2. That's it. Because in this case, square root of 33 is not a complete square. And you are not allowed to approximate it unless I ask you to do that. So there is nothing we can do. So how many answers I got? Two. One of them is what? Minus 5 plus the square root of 33 divided by 2. The other answer is minus 5 minus the square root of 33 divided by 2. So somehow you are more lucky if this is not a complete square because you just stopped there. Okay? Any questions? No. Okay, so I would recommend you until Friday, you will find some time at home. 
try to do this yourself. The first thing that I will do on Friday is solving this equation for you. I will also upload the videos on YouTube, and, but of course I will continue putting the links in your Google Classroom. Thank you. Please get swapped around. Bye.